Today we're going to take a look at Juin's new gimbal, the Cinekeeper 3E. Now they sent this to me a little bit ago and the weather has been absolutely terrible. So it's really going to be more of a first impressions review. But I also want to discuss why I'm even taking a look at this gimbal because let's face it. I've been saying in the past few videos that I've done gimbal reviews, I only do gimbal reviews when a gimbal has something special to say. There's a bunch of different companies that come out with them. The biggest thing as of late that gimbal technology has been adding is the ability to either do autofocusing capabilities or AI tracking. When it comes to a gimbal like this, this WeBuild 3E, it's a no-frills gimbal. This gimbal, it literally just does what gimbals are meant to do, and it's stabilize your footage and do it really well, but that's all this gimbal does. So what's so special about this gimbal? And I'll tell you, it all really comes down to the price. This is the cheapest professional gimbal that you could buy on the market, period. It's retailing for around $250. Right now, Juin's doing some special sale where if you use the links that they provided us, you can actually get this thing for around $200. So at around $200, still the cheapest professional gimbal you can get, period. So I'm gonna go over a little bit of the specs today and just discuss what this gimbal has and also what it doesn't, but I think most people who are in the market for a gimbal this cheap who just want the most professional gimbal, period, you're really gonna love what this has to offer. Now, Zhuin did send this out to me to do this review, but I don't really have to say anything. They didn't pay me to do this video. I'm just doing it because I wanted to see what was so special about this gimbal because it looked very similar to the WeBuild 3, but at a much lower price point. So yes, this gimbal is a no-frills gimbal. It doesn't really do anything besides stabilizing your footage. It does have a vertical mounting bracket, so if you want to do vertical video, you can do that really easily, but that's it. It doesn't offer any extras. The weight limit on this gimbal is pretty high for a gimbal at this price point. This is definitely something that's much better than an RS3 Mini. You can have camera setups close to around 6.6 .6 pounds. This setup right here that I have with the FX30, this is way under. We're, we're talking probably maybe a little bit under 3 pounds right here. So no issues whatsoever using this setup. I've actually used this setup with the FX30 and my Sigma 18-35. to I would say that's probably on the heavier end, probably close to maxing this thing out. I've also used it with my Red Komodo BP955 batteries and the Canon 35 millimeter. Now again, that was close to maxing it out as well. But one of the issues I found with using the Komodo, which is why I probably wouldn't recommend it with that camera specifically, this is a no frills gimbal. So there's not really anywhere on this gimbal to add a monitor or anything like that. This is really more meant for mirrorless cameras, DSLRs, any type of camera that has autofocus or you can use the built-in screen as a monitoring device because you're not gonna add anything on here. It just doesn't come with things like that armrest little majigger that the Weibo 3 comes with. It's an optional purchase. I obviously got this to review so I didn't get any of those extras. For a no frills gimbal at around 200, retail 250, you really can't get anything better than this. The only thing that comes close to this is Zhuin's other gimbal, their Crane M2S, their M3S, uh, or the RS3 Mini, which the RS3 Mini is not as good as this gimbal by any means. The weight capacity isn't as good. The stabilization algorithms isn't as good. You probably noticed after I did a few videos on the RS3 Mini, I didn't really keep using it after that. Uh, and that really just has to do with the stabilization algorithms weren't as good. I used it on a few weddings. They were okay, but in a lot of situations where I used the Sigma 18-35 and this FX30, just sometimes it wouldn't always cut it where this, this gimbal will totally cut it because the Sigma 18-35, the FX30, although you're getting close to maxing it out, you're not quite at that 6.6 .6 pound limit. Uh, and it also balances really easy on this. There's nothing in the way. And what I liked about using this setup here, this is with the 18 to 50 uh, and the DJI little transmitter thing that you, now you don't need wires. Um, this is a pretty compact setup that again is way below the limit. And I can get full range of motion using this no matter what, even with this little wireless sticking up on top. It's really not a problem at all. Now, a really big positive with this gimbal has to do with how you balance the roll motor right here. So on a lot of the newer gimbals, in order to balance the roll motor, they actually, you balance it from the little arm that's right here. Now on this gimbal, you're actually gonna balance the roll motor by adjusting the plate where it lives 
on this little axis right here. It's a little bit more of a pain in the butt to do. I'm gonna be upfront with that. But the reason I like it is once you have this thing balanced, one of the cool parts about the actual roll arm not moving at all is you can always take this thing and lock it in this position. So then when you wanna go put the gimbal away, maybe it's gonna go in your car, wherever, you could pretty much always have it in this position, keeping it as compact as possible, where if you have the ability to move your roll arm out, you can't really do that. Now, there are some negative aspects of this too. Like if you're using a camera, like I'm filming on the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K, well, that's a pretty wide camera. So it would be really hard to balance something like this on this gimbal. So that's where it comes down to this gimbal is going to be really good for anyone, again, filming on mirrorless cameras. You just don't have a huge footprint. If you just need a really small gimbal as an extra cam, maybe you're giving it to somebody on set and you want to give them a really solid gimbal. Maybe you're shooting weddings, corporate work, documentaries, and you're using really small mirrorless setups. This is really going to sing for the price. Then, of course, content creation. Now, you could use this as a vlogging gimbal. I don't see any reason why not. It's definitely a good all-around gimbal where if you're using this for other purposes, um, you could use it to do vlogging as well. The one thing I would say is I wouldn't buy this just as a vlogging gimbal like the Zhiyun Crane M2S that I used to use. I think those smaller and lighter gimbals are probably still better for that. But of course, they're a lot more limited. I tried using those gimbals for real estate work. And although I could make them work for real estate, they just didn't quite have the payload and the versatility I needed where this, you could totally use it for real estate work and it not be an issue whatsoever. I've really enjoyed the WeBill series of gimbals. I see what Juin's doing now and they have this Cinekeeper line. This isn't the only thing in that line. They've got some lights in that line as well where it's really their affordable or more budget level versions of some of their higher end products. The Cinekeeper seems to be more on the budget level price wise, but performance wise offer more on the pro level. For this gimbal specifically, it doesn't seem like there's any option to add uh, an actual manual follow focus, even though there's a little thread right here that some of the other gimbals you can just, you know, put a follow focus here and have some more advanced features for some manual lenses. Maybe you want to use lightweight anamorphic lenses. It doesn't seem like that's really an option on here. I actually use this for is for tilting. So if I want to get a cool tilt shot, I can kind of just instead of moving the gimbal up or using the joystick, use this wheel and get a slight tilt. It's been cool. It hasn't been groundbreaking by any means, but it's really the only thing that I see using with this gimbal since I'm using autofocus cameras uh, with this. But it would have been cool if Zhuin added a manual follow focus because that's something that I'm using more and more with a lot of gimbals right now, especially when I'm filming an anamorphic. This gimbal totally could have taken my Saray lenses and had enough weight to add a manual follow focus. And this would have been a really solid secondary gimbal to bring with me on set when I want to film maybe anamorphic on the Komodo and anamorphic on the FX30 and have maybe a second camera op running the FX30 just so I can get those extra angles. Overall, this gimbal's been pretty solid. Again, I'm looking at it at the lens for the price. It doesn't offer a lot of features, but it's also extremely affordable. So if you're in the market for something like that and you're not trying to spend a lot of money, this is definitely the best gimbal for the money out there, which is again, why I accepted this gimbal from Zhuin. So Zhuin, I do appreciate you sending this out. It was cool to test it and I can't wait to see what else you guys do, especially with some of your newer gimbals with all this technology coming out. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you got knowledge and value out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos on the channel. Until next time, my name's Jeff Fagan. There's gonna be more Black Magic content soon. I've been using this as the studio camera. Let me know what you guys think about the image. I will catch you all in the next video. See you later.